Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Silver Lake United Methodist Church. My name is Alex Rosso, and I am the pastor of this wonderful community. That was, that, was a, that was an intentional pause. It wasn't like a pause, like I had to think about it. But it's a, it's a joy to be in worship, I think, today. Like the other days in this worship series, we're going to uh, feel the, the Holy Spirit moving. And today, uh, Steve is going to be uh, sharing his story through uh, a song that he wrote. And I believe through this song, we're going to see how uh, the Spirit has moved through Steve, uh, is moving through Steve, and how the Spirit will continue to move through Steve uh, in, what, in what he does. Many of you know Steve has been in vital, uh, uh, more essential than, than, than me this past uh, year in keeping us connected. And uh, I just want to acknowledge like all the, the hard work, like Steve, just as back there on Sunday, he was at home researching all these things and how, how, to, how to make you feel like you were in the sanctuary even though you weren't uh, here. And he spent hours and hours, if I had to guess, probably like 15 to 20 hours a week, maybe on the, on the low end, and, and researching all these things to keep us connected. And so uh, I just want to thank, thank Steve uh, for doing that. Also, uh, uh, we have uh, some, some things to celebrate. Uh, Gary Musselman isn't here, but this past uh, week at the, the high school state track meet, he was inducted into the uh, Kansas high, State High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame. And so uh, if you see, see Gary or uh, uh, have his email, send him a congratulations, write him a card, uh, that's a pretty awesome honor. He committed a, a, a big portion of, of his, his work to that. And so that's a pretty cool thing. That's one thing we should celebrate as a community. Uh, there's a, a couple of birthdays. We actually have three birthdays today. One of, them, one of them is in the room. Bev is in the room. And so the rule is when they're in the room, what do we do? We sing happy birthday. And so let's, uh, let's join together. And it's not just for Bev. Uh, today's uh, Gaylord Kelsey's birthday, Dayton Ohl's birthday, uh, Bev's birthday, then Eldon's birthday. Eldon Roberson's birthday is on the, the 3rd of June. Katie Miller's birthday is on the 3rd of June. Peggy Blanding's birthday is on the 3rd of June, and Gary Whitlock is on the 4th of June. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries that I missed? All right, let's sing Bev Happy Birthday. You thought I forgot, didn't you? Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bev. Happy birthday to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then also, uh, VBS will be July 28th through July 30th from 6 to 8 p.m. We have uh, the link to sign up is, is on the website. Uh, and so I encourage you to, to sign up if you have a, a kiddo uh, it may be your neighbor. Yeah, you could share, hey, do you want to go to VBS? Or maybe you have your own kid that they would want to go. And then also there's a sign-up sheet in, in the foyer. We need uh, volunteers to, to teach uh, and, and help and support these kiddos as they go through VBS. It'll be uh, a fun. I think we'll have a lot of uh, adventure. As uh, we, we know, Kimberlyn uh, provides a lot of energy uh, to all the kiddos. And so I'm looking forward to VBS this year. And then also... Uh, Angela Roberson, Robertson, I always say it wrong, uh, so you have to excuse me, uh, is, is going to uh, make an announcement about the, the grief uh, support group that will begin, begin on June 10th. And so let me bring a, a microphone, or you, this microphone is live right here. Do you want to go over here or up here on the pulpit? Good morning. Um, as most of you remember, when I spoke about a month ago, um, there are various types of losses that we all deal with. Um, the type of loss, as far as in the support group, we're going to deal with loss of a loved one. That could be, you know, a parent, child, spouse, any type of loss of someone that you've had. And I would, Pastor Alex and I would co-facilitate, and we're going to 
we'd like to have a grief support group starting June 10th. Um, it, it sounds like a long time, but it will be for 10 weeks from 6 to 7.30, but it gives a chance to bring you together with other people who have maybe experienced losses and the great book, Understanding Your Grief, 10 Essential Touchstones for Finding Hope and Healing Your Heart. And again, this is based upon um, the companioning model of philosophy of grief care, which I was trained under with Dr. Alan Wiffelt, who is a grief therapist and author, and he's very well known across the United States. And I'm going to also attend in August, I'm going to attend a group facilitator training, so I'm excited about that. But um, the books are being purchased, and there's a journal that goes with the book, and the church is graciously offered to purchase these uh, for the use of the support group. So if you are interested, I believe there is a contact in the newsletter, and or you can call my phone number. Um, do we still have some more of the handouts? We do. The phone number. Okay. But either contact Pastor Alex or myself if you are interested, but I would sure um, like to get a group started here and uh, hope to see you. Thanks. Thank you, Angela. Yes, there's uh, multiple ways to sign up. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Uh, you can also email us and, and let us know. Uh, and like Angela said, it's, uh, it's, it's about walking alongside and being a companion on, on, your, on the journey of grief because it, it is different for, for everyone. And uh, one thing that Angela, and as Angela and I talk about it, is, uh, is uh, everything is kept within the, the space which we are, we are meeting. And so uh, the conversations uh, stay there and they don't leave. And so I just want to encourage you uh, to, to come. Uh, if, you're, if you're grieving a, a loss of a loved one or a friend, I, just, I think it will be a time, uh, a time, a time of, of healing uh, and a time of, of hope. Uh, that, that you'll, you will experience. Uh, with all that in mind, I just want you to rise and to sing the gathering hymn together, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. gathering prayer. Blow, wind of God, blow away the tight rolls that hold me back from trusting, 
risking loving. Blow away my sin that stands in the way of encountering my neighbors. Ready me for birth, prepare me for risk, equip me with courage and vision for the new thing that waits round the corner. We cannot choose the stories that inherited, but we can choose the stories that we become. Amen. Join together in singing Awesome God with me. gathering words from Psalms 29. Ascribe the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord of mighty waters the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks in cinders. The bird breaks in the of the Lebanon. He makes the Lebanon, the calf, and Syrian, the young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl, and the stripes of forest bear, and his temple all say, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. They may be strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Let's praise God together by singing, To God Be the, go the Glory.
Join one another in saying the unison prayer together. Loving God, we confess that our gaze is often too low, focused on the earthly descent of the blood being born of you from above, and from within by the power of our Holy Spirit, broaden our understanding of love and grace to see more fully how does you see. Help us in others such a way that our love is full of display. Amen. Okay. Uh, you may be seated. And uh, as we enter into uh, this time of prayer and continue to pray with one another, uh, one of the things is, is that this, this weekend is Memorial Weekend. And so... I wanted to, to give each one of us uh, an opportunity to, to voice. Uh, uh, I, like I was just talking with Janine, and she said she w was on the way to uh, the cemetery uh, before coming to church. And so I want to give each one of you an opportunity to, to speak a, a loved one's uh, name out loud, and then I'll repeat the name so we, we know that uh, uh, as we go through this weekend, it's also a, a time of uh, uh, connecting with, with the loved ones who we ha have, have lost uh, in, our, in our lives or uh, connecting with, with them in, in more than one way, just in the, the spiritual realm, but then also physically going and, uh, and decorating where they, they are, uh, where we committed their life uh, to, to God. And so... Uh, I just want to pause and acknowledge that and to allow you to express and to say verbally uh, a loved one's name. Brian Lindstrom. Brian Lindstrom. Keith Bray. Ray Raymond, Raymond Kalsik. Marie and Warren Glace. George and Dora Allen. Daniel Mitchell. Daryl and Frida Little. John and Goldie Robertson. Neil and Edith Preston. Michael Brewster, twin brother to Pat. Dewey Dodds. Dewey Dodds. Dewey Dodds. Mitch Blanding. Mitch Blanding. Randy Cunningham. Laura and John Briggs. Laura and John Briggs. Grace. Grace. Briggs, okay. Sorry. John de Don DeGroff and sorry. And Don Folk. The two hundred and five veterans that flags were put in the cemetery for. All those who have lost loved ones by suicide. Let's go to God in prayer. Oh God, as, as we gather today on this memorial weekend, we just spoke uh, out loud many names uh, of loved ones who are not with us today. We ask that you comfort us and, and give a, us peace. We know that you sit with us 
And we're so thankful for that. You sit with us, you hear our, our, our cries, our, 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 our wailings, the groanings of our heart. God, also today we, we know in our community there are many who are in, in need of healing. We know there are many in our community who are experiencing a, a tra transition in life, whether it's a, a new job or maybe it is moving from one place to another. Many, maybe it's a, a transition from uh, elementary school to junior high or junior high to high school, or maybe it's from second grade to third grade or preschool to kindergarten or fifth grade to sixth grade. Maybe it's from one profession to another. God, we ask that you sustain us in, in all of these uh, transitions. We ask that you make your presence palpable to us so we can feel it and to know that you are with us. God, uh, and, and today we, we, well, we're going to lift up some, some more names to you in prayer. God, we, we pray for uh, those who are, are on our prayer list as a, a community, we pray for, uh, for Mark, uh, Tucker Lee, Art Thomas, Jolene Wiltz. Uh, we pray for Stan Little, Kathy Grimm, Stephen Johnson, Nancy Musselman, Frank Hurdig, Leroy Grimm, Doris Hurdig, Leland Moore, Betty Kalsick, Jim Stadler, Gina Lutz, uh, Brian, or Mary Cassor, Dallas Maddox, Brian Crawl, Haley Elliott, uh, Vera Pierce, Jensen Armstrong, Thelma Bray, Walt Stoll, Wanda Winnell, Veda McRoberts, Dale and Dorothy Fry, Roger Haney, Mike Mitchell, Stacey Dancer, Sam Barrett, Ron Workman, and Donna Campmeyer. God, we know this list is not, uh, uh, does not include everyone. And so we pause in this moment to add our own prayers to this list. God, we know that you are, are with us. We know that you hear our prayers. Help us to be more aware of your presence that, it, that is always surrounding us. Help us to, to open our ears to the ways in, 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 in which the Spirit is leading and, and calling and speaking to each one of us. Because as we've experienced these past seven weeks, the Spirit's voice is loud. And all we, we need to do is to bend our ear and listen and take the first step. God, we give thanks to, to Jesus who taught his disciples to pray, and we together today pray the same prayer that he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as Marley reads the scripture today from the book of Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an ob obligation, but it isn't an obligation to ourselves, to live our lives on the basis of self selfishness. If you live on the basis of selfishness, you are going to die. But if, but if by the Spirit you put to death, the actions of your body will live. All who are led by God's Spirit are God's sons and daughters. 
you didn't receive a spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear, but you received a spirit that shows you you are adopted as his children. With his spirit we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit grieves with our spirit that we are God's children, but if we are God, if we are children, we are also ears. We are God's ears and fellow ears with Christ. If we really suffer with him so that we can also be glorified with him, may God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's word. Amen. Amen. You may be, you may be seated. And then uh, as Steve is making his way up here, uh, there's, uh, we've been creating space for, for anyone who would want to, to share uh, part of their story. And so as Steve makes his way up, I want to invite, if anyone would like to, this microphone is open if you'd like to, to share a p- part of your story. Good morning. Uh, this, I've, I've really been blessed by listening to everybody share their stories. And uh, uh, this time, Pastor a- Alex asked me to uh, do something a little different. It's basically sharing the story of how I came to write a song. It's a song I've done, I've done here before. It's called Why Do We Pray? And uh, the original seed for the idea for the song came from a conversation with a coworker I had in my former job. And he would describe himself as a former Christian and more of an agnostic. So I, I told him he's probably a Christian or a believer with agnostic tendencies, which puts him in the ballpark with a lot of us. Um, he knew the, the model of prayer was the Lord's Prayer, and he knew that any pray, any, anytime you would pray, it should include thy will be done, God's will be done. So he was always, why should we pray if God's going to get his will done no matter what we want? He said, what's the point of the prayer? And at the time... You know, we used to debate faith topics and spirituality, and I really didn't have a good answer for him other than the trite thing that most Christians say is, well, God's ways are not our ways. We don't understand. And uh, so I really kind of had to leave it there, and I said, you know, I'd have to think about it a lot more. And uh, I didn't give him a great answer at that time, and I'm sorry we never really got to finish that conversation. But then a little later, uh, my neighbor... uh, Parker Monholland, as you all know, was diagnosed with DIPG. Um, my daughter, she's a school teacher at the grade school, and she came home and said, Parker's been diagnosed with this DIPG. Do you know anything about it? Like a lot of people, I didn't know anything about it. But you get on Google and you kind of look it up and see how serious it is. And oh my gosh, you find out you know, the survival rate for DIPG is zero. No one has ever survived this. Which doesn't mean that we won't pray for her. I mean, our church community, faith community, prayed for her. All the churches in town prayed for uh, People that don't go to church sent thoughts and prayers, you know. And yet, in the back of your mind, you still have that scientific medical information that tells you no one ever survives this at this point. We haven't got the technology to, to cure this person. And, uh, you know, a lot of people will, when you're faced with that, that you have your faith life, and then you have science, and some people say, well, this is a collision course between faith and science. What's going to give? And whenever I hear something like that, I think back to history class and science class, and, and uh, I know you probably all remember learning that Galileo Galilei, he invented the telescope. But what you may not have been taught in school was that Galileo got into a lot of trouble with the church because at that time, this was just a few years, probably about 100 years after the Protestant Reformation. So the church was defensive, and Galileo had had come to understand with his telescope that Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish mathematician and astronomer, had a model of the solar system that had the sun as the center of the solar system. And the church's official stance was the earth was the center of the universe. Everything revolved around the earth. And so the Pope called for a Roman Inquisition, and Galileo was brought up on charges because what he was teaching 
went against the church's understanding of scripture at the time. And some people might think, well, this challenges the faith of Galileo. Galileo was a very spiritual person. And eventually he was convicted of heresy because his teachings that the, the sun was the center of the solar system conflicted with at least 11 scriptures, 10 to 12 scriptures that they had brought charges against him. So he was in prison for the rest of his life. And that's a whole different discussion whether or not churches should have prisons. But the, the situation where he had to spend the rest of his life under house arrest and no longer allowed to use the mind gave, God gave him to understand the cosmos. And some people might think, well, this is a perfect case of your faith colliding with science and what's going to win. But that's not what this was at all. Because Galileo on his deathbed still believed in God. What Galileo probably didn't believe so much in was his religion. He lost his faith in his religion. This was a case of, this wasn't a case of faith colliding with science. This was a case of religion colliding with science. And you don't hear it a lot in church, but I think it needs to be said that a lot of things that keeps people from finding God is religion, and sometimes religious people. I mean, there's not a Christian alive today that thinks the sun revolves around the earth. But if you took that stance back then, you could be in prison and kicked out of the church, and you, you, it's just astounding. So. When you go back to, I, you know, I, I knew that Parker faced a battle that no one had ever won. It didn't stop us from praying for, but at the time, I had flashbacks to my own mom. In her early 50s, she, uh, she began to have dizzy spells and fainting and falling, and, and so she went to began to go see some doctors to find out what we might find out. And, uh, you know, I prayed that we'd get some answers. What, what's going on? Those prayers were answered. We found out what was going on. She had a brain tumor. So then we began to pray that the tumor could be maybe removed through surgery and, and, and it would be benign. We found out that it couldn't be removed. And... Uh, then she, uh, she began to take treatment. She'd take radiation and chemo, and we prayed that the radiation chemo would shrink the tumor, and it didn't. The cancer had spread to her lymph nodes. She was given six months, and uh, Brooke was maybe four or five months old. She doesn't remember my mom whatsoever, but my mom hung on for 12 months. And uh, I suppose part of that, she was, she was always crafting, quilting, sewing, and she was trying to finish a blanket for her oldest granddaughter, who was just turning 15, 16. And uh, she lived long enough to finish that project, and then she kind of let go. But our prayers began, I mean, my prayers began to change. I, I, I knew the chemo and radiation was taking its toll on her, and, and I prayed that she'd be comforted. And she, and, you know, the morphine and whatever they could give her would give her some comfort and some rest. And then as, you know, she kind of prepared herself to cross over, my prayers changed again to, to pray to God that when the end comes, make it fast. Don't make her suffer, you know. And you come to understand that the prayer may or may not change God's mind on the outcome of things that are going to happen. But during the course of the prayer, it changes the person doing the prayer. Because my prayers were now that allow her suffering to stop. I'm going to be okay. She can go. But, you know, there's parts of me that it's always going to be sad that Brooke never really got to know her grandmother. But it, it, it shows that the, maybe the purpose of prayer isn't to get what we want or that God's will will always be done. But the prayer changes you because you begin to establish a relationship God that's totally different than anything perhaps you might have ever experienced before. It's a one-on-one -on -one communication and, and you learn that during those times and trials that God comes alongside you and walks with you. And so I wrote this song that kind of explains those things. And I know we've got folks online that are watching that, that don't live locally. 
for you, I, I've explained that I'd, I'd gone to a recording studio a couple years ago and recorded a bunch of songs. And I would like to make a gift to anybody online that wants to leave a comment and direct message to church with your address. I'll make sure we'll send you a copy of the CD if you'd like. I just ask that you send a gift back to the church in any amount, whatever you want to do. But um, I've got a backing track from the recording studio that I'm going to have Jackson play uh, while I sing to it and, and play along with it. But the structure of the song itself, and I'm going to ask him to have the lyrics up here in the sanctuary so you can follow along, just read along. Uh, the first verse represents myself talking to myself and walking through these dilemmas. The second verse talks about, uh, I, I begin to talk to God. There's a bridge, and then the fourth verse actually is a prayer itself and asking God to help me along the way. So uh, I'd like to go ahead and play that now. If Jackson's ready for the track, and uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
guess I can say Maybe that's why Thank you, thank you, Steve. I, as we were, were were talking, and I know that was a, a Holy Spirit moment. I, I I just appreciate all of your stories. So, could you join me in and uh, in, in lift raising your hand or extending your hand towards Steve, so we can give God thanks for Steve's story. God, we give you thanks for for Steve's story. The way that he is able to communicate your your love and hope and grace to people through his music and the willingness for him to enter into uh, uh, tough conversations with one another and we're grateful for his courage to share his story and your story with us. In your name we pray, amen. Uh, and now I invite you to, uh, to, to ponder how the, the spirit might be moving within you as we listen to Kathy Altman play. I invite you to rise as we prepare to sing the closing hymn. And uh, as Kathy was playing, I was reflecting on like how, how what an honor it is for us to hear uh, each other's stories over these past seven weeks. We've had uh, so many people share with us, and I'm just so grateful for everyone who has uh, has shared. It's been a a way to not only connect with them but connect with God through their story. And I just I give, I give thanks for, for everyone who, who shared their story uh, with us. And so you might be wondering, where are we going, where, where are we going to move, move through here as a community? And so uh, next week, we're going to, uh, to begin. Uh, it's uh, something, it's called a, a Sermon Dialogue Sermon. And so I mentioned it in my, my weekly note. And so uh, next week, uh, the, the sermon is going to be on uh, mental health. Uh, because if we look around the room, uh, one out of every five of us has a personal experience with mental health or a mental health uh, problem. Or we, we know someone uh, closely or we also, we, also we, we might be the, per, the person or individual who is, is struggling with our mental health. And so we're going to talk about uh, uh, what does it look like uh, to be a, a community who supports uh, supports uh, individuals uh, who are, are, are struggling with their, their mental health. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the, the uh, give a couple of options. Uh, and so we're, and then we're going to, uh, my hope is that 10 to 15 of you show up on uh, the 7th, so Monday. So next week, we're going to talk about it. And on the 7th, we're going to have a dialogue about it. Uh, what can we do uh, as a community? Uh, how can we, we might become advocates? The, the possibilities are endless. You all will, will lead to that discussion. 
And then the, the following weekend, we're gonna have, uh, it's gonna be like a community response. Like this is what we are going to do as a community to, to come along beside those uh, who maybe they are having trouble seeking uh, help uh, for the, the mental health uh, right at this moment. Maybe they can't uh, get access to care. Maybe they need someone just to talk to. And so we're gonna, we're gonna talk through all those things at the dialogue. Uh, you'll drive those all. I have a handout that I'm gonna give to you and we'll kind of go through each uh, option, talk about our own uh, personal experiences or experiences of someone we know. And so th that will be the, ne the next two weeks. And I just wanted to give you an insight on where we are going. Uh, as a community, as this one chapter on our stories closes, uh, but the next chapter is beginning. I invite you to stand and sing, Here I Am, Lord. Please receive the, the benediction. I just heard everyone say, I will go, Lord. And so as you lead this place, I ask for you to think, where is God sending you? Where is God sending you? And may God bless you and keep you this week. Amen.